Hi everybody, it's Larry Koch from Flybox and I'm doing another video today on what I consider to be how to start an insect uh, into the insect farming industry the right way. And so what I mean by that is how do you as a new entrant get into insect farming without spending a lot of money, um, without making your life too complicated and by reducing the risk and complexity of getting into the space. And this is very, very important. And so this is close to my heart because at the early days of building my, my, my insect technology company, Flybox, I was fielding a lot of the initial um, conversations people wanted to have. And they obviously wanted to talk about technology in our case. <clears throat> and I was finding, it was very evident that most people were absolutely jumping ahead of the gun and were not actually ready to talk about technology because they had not done basic, they didn't have a basic understanding even of the kind of business model they would need to build. So a lot of people, look at this space and, and and think that there's a sort of natural logic to insects eating waste, turning it back into food. And they like that it's such a simple logic and they like that it's uh, got a potential for such a high impact. But what they don't have is a strategy of what part of the industry are they going to get into? How do those align to their skills and their existing businesses? And also, why are they making insects? What is the point of making insects? For what market? Um, why is that better than what's already on the market, <clears throat> etc.? These things are, 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 thought, are not thought of in far enough detail, as much detail as they need to, and people jump the gun and want to talk about the shiny technology. So this is, if you like, a public service announcement to anyone else who might find themselves in those shoes, whether you've got an existing company, you're trying to pivot into this or start a subsidiary or incorporate insects in some way to your business, or you're like a new operator who just wants to get into this, I really want to kind of pump the brakes a bit and ask you to, to look at some of the... Um, the nuance around how you could enter the, the space. I'm going to cover things at a fairly high level in terms of I'm just focusing on that exact topic, how to get in. We could have a much longer discussion about each of these individual things. So if you like what I'm saying or you find this interesting, please like the video. That's already a great signal for me. But if you could also subscribe, then you'll get my next videos, which will be covering some of these things in much greater detail. And if you comment in the section below, you'll also be able to tell me what you want to see in the next video. I will read those, I will take them seriously, and I will make videos about them. So let's get into it. First step is let's talk about the different business models. You know, the early industry was dominated by large factories, companies that raised a lot of venture capital to bring forward a new idea. And they were doing the entire business model, the entire supply chain, they were vertically integrated, which is to say, that they did the breeding of the livestock. So that's the colonies, the adults making eggs and, and, and five-day-old larvae. That's the waste management or the feedstock um, processing. So the fattening of those larvae into adults. They did the pupation. You know, they then did the harvesting of the, the, the larvae products, post-processing those into different um, ingredients and then selling those ingredients to various markets. So that is as far as most livestock businesses go, that's pretty um, punchy to do the whole thing and to take on the whole risk of the entire supply chain. But let's be fair to those companies. There was no one they could outsource anything to. There was no way to form partnerships with somebody doing one part of the chain and them doing another part because it was a new industry. So this was the right way to build the industry. But we that was the past. And we are now in 2024 we have other options available to us. So what I want to encourage is, first of all, to break down the chain that I just mentioned into its constituent parts. We could break it down even further, but let's just focus on the main three parts, and that is breeding. So that is dealing with the, the adults, um, dealing with the adults laying eggs and inputs that then go into growing, which is eating all of the feedstock, turning it into protein, that's the part that most people are going to probably be looking at when they're, if you're, if you're watching this video, you're probably more interested in the getting rid of waste problem or creating an animal protein for your own, your own business or, or even a new product that you can, you can sell. And then there's the full stack, which is the, what I was talking about before, like doing a whole in one roof, a whole insect farm sort of separate over here. And that will involve the post-processing. And the reason why the post-processing is kind of off by itself is because to get a insect farm really profitable or even close to being profitable, you have to have a serious scale in terms of your post-processing because the kind of machines that can efficiently process and render you know, live larvae into oils and defatted meals and hydrolysates, the kind of component ingredients that fetch a good price 
that you can actually bring onto the market at, at volume, they require a lot of a lot of production basically to feed those processing lines to be efficient. You're talking like three, four tons an hour of live larvae need to be going in at the smaller scale to even have a viable you know, post-processing farm realistically. Of course, you can do it cheaper. You can cut corners and all these things. But in talking, if we're talking like, you know, industrial scale, moving the needle in terms of global production of protein, it's not viable at a small scale or for anyone who's getting into this industry who might be watching this video to consider doing that realistically, um, you know, properly from, from day one. Now, of course, you can start with small scale stuff, R&D. You can start with um, pilot farms. But we're talking here as like, okay, if you're thinking where eventually am I going to go as a business commercially, you need to ideally look at the different business models on offer and work out what lines up with your skills and your existing business. And that's really the thing is it's just too complex and, 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 and expensive to try. You, you need extreme amounts of money and, and time and, and, and experts to help you with all of this. So it's the price of the, the, the technology being extremely high. It's the specialist skills that you need. Um, this is not an industry that is well trodden. It's not like livestock or, or you know, poultry or, or swine. Um, there are many, many things that are still unknown. There are many secrets closely guarded by existing companies that are not available online. Yes, there's a lot of research. Yes, you can read some of it, but take it from someone who's been in the industry already for a long time. There's no way you can have your head around all of it. You will need to either develop an insane amount of skills or work hire people and or work with experts who can help you to figure out the business model that makes most sense, figure out whether it's a viable thing for you to be doing, whether you'll make any money. And all of this stuff can be done on paper, which we'll get into, and can be done um, very low cost or without spending any money on technology until you're, until you're ready. But yes, this is the main problem that this, looking at things in this way, helps kind of break that up and make and, and turn it into kind of pieces. So focusing on the... Um, the growing side of things, because that's what most people want to do. This is just to give you an example of what that would look like. So you'd have a, a, a kind of, you know, agricultural space, you would put in technology, my company provides turnkey insect technology, there's other companies who do it as well, depending on the scale you want to go, and various things, and where you and then how quickly you want to build. Um, there you kind of operate it. And then you can have the juveniles outsourced. So that's you have a breeding company, that's this side supplies you with the juvenile larvae, that's going to do the waste management. So let's say you have a waste problem, you can just outsource this, and then you can have a company buy back the product. So a ready-made sales channel that will come and pick up the live larvae. You do not have to become an entomology expert or an expert in selling niche commodities, right? Why would you get into those spaces unless you're an expert in them? There are many experts who already are there. It's about forming the right partnerships. And certainly, Flybox can help you with finding those partnerships. That's kind of what we what we do. Similarly, if you are just after the, the protein yourself, so you don't actually want anyone to buy back the larvae, you need them for yourselves. Well, of course, you can do that. And if you're missing the feedstock part of the equation, you don't have a source of reject organics to feed your larvae, you can outsource that too. So there are companies that specialize in collecting and managing organic waste streams, reject organics, um, byproduct, and they Many of them are looking into insects and have certain recipes that might already be pre-mixed and ready to, to send to your farm. So if you know the right people, you can cut out, as you can see from this diagram, you've just cut out 80% of the headache of running a farm is now gone because you can outsource it to other partners. And this is very different from what the early people in the industry would, would have experienced. So again, lower cost, lower risk, lower effort. Um, and you can start smaller and you don't need big processing lines all of the above. So that is the point of being clever with your business plan before rushing around trying to build an insect farm. So moving on from there, let's say you, 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 you've come up with an idea, you want to do like a growing farm, you know you can start at a small scale, you have these partnerships already written out in place. So you're now thinking, okay, well, I've got some good potential economics here. The, you, you kind of know what people want to pay for the larvae. You kind of know what people will sell you the seedlings for because they'll just give you the pricing. You know what the technology is going to cost. You know, if you speak to companies like us, how, how much the running costs of that tech is going to be and what the labor requirements will be. So you have a lot of the elements of your business plan actually now worked out on paper. What you will lack, though, is the um, if you're planning on using your own organic feedstock, the next most complicated thing that everyone gets tripped up over is the organic feedstock and working out what to feed your insects. So... I'll touch on that for a little bit here, but this could be a whole other 
video, which if you want me to, to um, do, please just comment and I will do it. The feedstock here, it, we just in general, you know, we all know it has to be a low particle size, 70% moisture. Ideally, a lot of times you want higher protein. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be new, nutri the right nutrition for your insects who have nutritional requirements. They have protein, carbs, fats requirements. Um, obviously, you're 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 restricted by what is permitted in your your region. So there are certain countries where you can't use certain feedstocks. Others where you can. Um, no green waste, as you might know, and um, and yes, and 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 you need to pre-process that waste. So your this is what you want to end up with. You want to end up with a porridge of highly nutritious feedstock, and so that is going to make a very economical performance for your larvae. So if you skimp out, if you do not do this properly, and you do not end up with something that looks like this image on the right, yeah, you're not going to be successful in insect farming. That's basically the rub, the long and short of it. There is no shortcutting this process. Whether it's your feedstock or using someone else's feedstock, you have to do trials. So if you want to do it properly, this is what it looks like. You can use an expert to help you with this, someone who's actually an insect nutritionist. Speak to me if you're interested in that. Or you can learn this stuff yourself. Or you can do a hybrid where you have someone sort of teach you these skills and then help you monitor as you go along. I, you know, Flybox also provides that. that. So if you, if you want to know how that works, head over to our website. Link will be below. Or just you know, comment here. Um, the... So let's let, let's go over the process. What what you need to do, or you need to work with someone on. The first step is feedstock information. You've got to find all the feedstock around you. Imagine just building like a catalog in a matrix of all of the 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 waste sources that are around you, all of their nutritional information, all of their environmental information, like the density, viscosity, all of the economic information, the price, the availability, the seasonality, the logistics, the cost of logistics, the processing requirements, and you can then score everything on a kind of matrix as to what would be the lowest cost, best used uh, formulations. Um, of course, you can do technical assessments as well, very key to make sure there's no salmonella, you know, heavy metals, other nasties. Um, and then at the end of that, once you've kind of got your kosher feedstocks that all provide nutrition, you make a formula. So it might be 70% of feedstock A and 30% of feedstock B is the perfect mixture that's going to de deliver great economic performance. So that's very quick development time for our insects. They're going to eat very fast. They're going to convert a lot of that feed into biomass, um, and they're going to so, so they're going to basically have great economic performance. So this is an on paper exercise. You don't have to again have any technology. You can work with an expert to do all this cataloging and matrix building and create these on paper formulations, on you know, on paper. Then you need to do feeding trials. And when I talk about feeding trials, I'm talking about very small feeding trials. So I'm talking about like, imagine an ice cream tub or a lunchbox. You can do it in that smaller scale trials. You want to take, let's say, your top three or four um, potential formulations. You're then going to do feeding trials at a very small scale. There's a methodology to doing those. It's a very particular methodology. If you don't have the right methodology, you will screw it up. There's conflicting stuff out there on the internet. I suggest you use an expert to at least advise you and teach you how to do the feeding trials. But once you've done the feeding trials, you will be able to say, okay, diet A and diet B perform the best. So now I want to do larger scale feeding trials. And this is where you can start doing, you know, 100 trays, 200 trays worth of insects to see if you still get the same feed conversion and the same um, development time. Now for this, you're going to want to use uh, proper, uh, proper equipment. So you're going to want to use um, at least a uh, some company that has lab scale or semi-commercial scale testing facilities that can grow out for you this much larvae with that much feedstock. Um, and so that's the next phase. And once you're done with that, and that all confirms coming out what you want, you can plug those numbers into your business plan. And now your business plan is complete. You, your business plan will tell you whether or not you're going to make any money doing insect farming. And notice that at no point here have you had to spend any money on technology. Of course, you can build your own pilot and do all of these trials yourself. Then you've got six months, you've got a year, you know, you can literally sit there and do hundreds of trials. So once you have the skills on how to run trials, you can really dial this in. And every single day you spend trying to dial in the, 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 the feedstock side of things is 10 days of pain you're going to avoid later. Because if you start with the wrong diet that can't scale with you, that isn't actually commercial, that um, is temperamental, you pick the wrong suppliers of waste that then um, shut down or have seasonal waste or they, they, they have waste that's different batch to batch, you're going to have a nightmare when you try to scale that up 
And so if you've already pinned all of your IP and your intelligence on the wrong feedstock, you're going to suffer greatly uh, in, in the future. So there's many, many devils in the details. I've just glossed over the absolute bare minimum here in terms of how you, how you validate the right feedstock. But I can't stress enough that this is the thing that kills every insect farming business is not having done this properly. And it's a fraction of the price to work with someone to do this properly than it is to invest in a farm. So for God's sake, do not, do not, do not entertain spending tens or hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars on technology without having rigorously assessed if your business plan is going to work with real data based on real trials in real insect farming conditions. So if you need any more help with that, you just get in touch with me and, I, and, and I'll try my best. The option, the second option you have, though, of course, if you are going to start a growing farm is just to work with someone else's feedstock. So, you know, if you're in the UK, if you're in Kenya, luckily, I can help with that. Um, I can also point to people in Europe if you're in Europe as well. US, not so much right now at the time of recording this video. But if it's a little bit in the future you're watching this, then get in touch. Maybe I've got some options for you. There are many companies that would love their reject organics to go to insects who have great diets. You just need to know who they are and they will give you an almost complete diet ready to go that you just need to receive and store in tanks and draw down when you're doing your farming. So if you're not really got a waste problem, you just want to make the protein, this is also a great option to take all of the hassle I just mentioned from you away. But if you have your own waste uh, and you clearly you want to do something better with it, then you do need to um, go through this process. And there is no shortcutting this process. So that's everything I've got for today. Um, you know, my company Flybox, just a quick plug, we do the technology, but we also help with all the support that I've just mentioned today. Um, you can actually come see us if you want to see some of these things in, in action, what a lab looks like, what a pilot scale farm looks like. Um, if you're around in the UK or you're in um, Kenya, you can come and see them. Um, we, have, we have others coming up in Europe and in Uganda, but right now, um, there's that. Check our website, flybox.bio, if we have more demonstrators um, by the time you're watching this. And, and yeah, you know, all these things I've mentioned today, there are companies that will help you get the feedstock trials to do all that, that work, that can help you get outsourced seedlings, that can help you outsource um, the, the feedstock and can help you with those sales channels so you don't have to think about it. So I really want to encourage everybody today that, you know, let's get into the insect farming industry the right way. Um, let's take a deep breath and think about the way that your business, your skill sets can map onto this industry the right way. Thanks very much. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in another video. Um, like the video, subscribe and see you soon. Bye.